Welcome back to the Fit Soul podcast, YouTube, or however you're consuming this content. I want to say, number one, thank you. Thank you for being here this year and supporting um, the Fit Soul podcast and YouTube and just be being my people. I, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I just want to take this time as we're wrapping up the year 2023 when this is being recorded and looking forward to a new year that uh, when I started this podcast, it was something that I had been wanting to do for years, planning to do. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And this was the year that I said, screw it. I mean, it's time to start the podcast. Messy. I'm just going to start it and I'm going to come back and optimize it, but I'm just at least going to get started. And so you guys have been along this messy ride with me as I've been figuring it out and I'm going to figure it out actually at a higher capacity in 2024. That's part of my goal. So I really want to just say, I just want to stop and pause and say, thank you. I'm grateful for you. I truly am. I mean that from, from the bottom of my heart. And as we're in this last week of the year, so much has happened in 2023 that I just want to take a moment and um, really walk you through an exercise, a, a reflection exercise. And uh, this, this podcast will be released the day after Christmas. I'm actually recording it before um, the week before Christmas. And as I'm just in this moment of reflection and in a place of gratitude. And then also it's, uh, I'm able to acknowledge that in this place of reflection and gratitude and thinking about the year, there's been some really beautiful, beautiful moments and some really, really hard moments. And I have a feeling in your life, it may be much the same way that we can uh, celebrate the good. And I do want you to take some time and rejoice, rejoice what went well. What worked well in 2023? What can you celebrate? I was flipping through my phone and I found a picture of a concert my daughter and I went to in Vegas. It was this super short, super, I wouldn't say impromptu because we both had to plan it, but we met in Vegas for less than 24 hours. I had a speaking engagement in California and I just thought, wow, this is a kind of a crazy idea. My daughter lives over in Denver. What if we, what if I stopped in, because what I've done before is I've stopped in, um, when I've gone out to the West Coast in, in Denver, when I'm already flying out that way and spent some time with her and then I'll fly on out to California. So um, we went to a Katy Perry concert. We, we, we both flew to Vegas and like my flight got in at two o'clock that afternoon and I was at the airport. We were both at the airport the next morning at 6 a.m. Like it was the shortest trip ever. But when I look at the pictures and um, just remember how much fun we had that one night, it was just a short time. It was a best moments, one of my best moments of the year. And I want you to think about like maybe even flip through your phone. This is a great exercise to do is to flip through your phone and, and where you had pictures. What's your best moments? What, what, what are some good things that happened through the year and um, make note of it, like celebrate it for our, for our family. We've had, I've, I've called it a year of celebrations. It has been a milestone of milestone years. Our um, daughter, my bonus daughter and her now husband, they got married in March. Huge, exciting. So, I mean, you know, life-changing moment milestone. It was amazing. It was beautiful. And we celebrated that. Um, I turned 50 this year and that was, it was a, a big deal. I had a blowout party. <laughs> I listen, I celebrated that 50th. It, for me, it was so much more than just turning 50 and, and, and 50 is a big milestone anyway. It was, it was, um, it was a bigger deal than that for me because I was able to see how I've been able to move in the last decade and what God's done and just was full of gratitude. It's like I found myself. And so that party was not just about me, but I was able to highlight um, my sweet friend, Gabby, 13 years old, who right now at the time I'm recording this is literally in the fight of her life. And, you know, unless a miracle comes very, very soon, um, Gabby will no longer be with us on this in on this earth. Unless that miracle comes soon. 
And so to have shared that night with her and to perform and to have sang with her and to have that, are you kidding me? Best moments. Like that's a best moment. Um, my husband turned 60, another big celebration, another child turned 30, another big celebration. We had our 10 year wedding anniversary and spent time in California doing the bucket list, um, coastline trip, big deal. All of those were big deals. I'm not trying to share with you my best moments because it was a year of milestones and it was so interesting. I can look at this year and I don't just go, oh my gosh, it was like the best year ever because it was really, there were some really hard things. My ex-husband, my children's father died this year. I mean, that's so sad. It's so sad on so many levels. I'm watching a family walk through the valley of the shadow of death right now. Horrible. I mean, that's just awful. My husband had a terrible skin cancer scare and a big skin cancer surgery. It was a big deal. I mean, I've had my own health issues. And then, of course, I've got stuff going on that I don't talk about publicly, but it's big. It's big, big, big. And I know you do too. So it's just like the circle of life. It's like life is full of wonderful things and it's hard. But if we really only focus on the hard, we're going to miss the beauty of life. And part of the beauty of life is that ability to have resilience in the face of adversity. And the more that we grow that resilience, which is what we do, we grow in resilience, the healthier we're going to be emotionally, spiritually, um, physically all of the above. So I want to encourage you to take some time and rejoice over this last year. Acknowledge the hardships even that you've, you made it through. I mean, like, hello, give yourself a hand. You made it through some hard crap last year, this past year. So let, let's take a moment for that. But what I really want to share with you today is moving forward into 2024. I want you to think about what are you ready to release? And that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to talk about today. What in your life are you like, okay, I had that in 2023. Maybe you had it in 2022. Maybe you've had it all your life and you ain't shed it yet. What I want to share with you is I want you to take some time and think through this this week. And, and really this is an exercise we should think, think about all the time, but it really is meaningful at the end of a year. Um, I mentioned earlier that I've had a, a lot of stress, a lot deep, I mean, heavy, some heavy stress in my personal life. And <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned is that my body has been holding on to stress. I had some functional labs drawn where they've really been able to identify how much, how high my cortisol is and how my adrenal and my thyroid are not functioning properly because of all of the stress that I'm having. And what I learned from this, what I learned from that, that lab, honestly, I've had a lot of functional labs drawn before, but this was the first one that I was like, oh, wow. I was able to get, honestly, a, a personal protocol that um, is helping me to deal with getting healthier adrenal and thyroid so I can thrive properly in midlife with my health. But it was the one of the first times I've been able to go, okay, well, I thought I was dealing with my stress in a healthy level. If you were to, if you look at my paper on lot, uh, on like, if you look at my life on paper, I have a pretty healthy sh stress management practice in my life. I get up Every morning I get grounded, <laughs> literally, like literally outside. I go get, I get grounded. I, um, I have a quiet time. I pray, I, I meditate. Um, I'm not working nearly as hard as I used to. I used to be full on workaholic. I, I'm not that anymore. Uh, I walk daily for mental and emotional well-being. I exercise. I eat well. There are so many things that I have in my life that are solid, solid routines and healthy habits. So when I saw this, it was it was surprising. Like, wait, what? It actually explains some things because if your stress levels are too high, you'll hold on to weight. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm kind of doing all the right things in my life and I'm still struggling with my weight, I, I want to 
in fact, you know what, uh, let, let me know. I can help you with that. I, I had to roll up my sleeves and dig deep to figure out what was going on with my own health. And I'm actually offering a functional fat loss program in January. I haven't done that. I have not done a fat loss program in four years. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. I don't know that I'm going to do it again. Like this, this is maybe a one-off. So if you're really struggling and want to get rid of that weight, let me know. And um, you can check the show notes or go to uh, thefitsoul.com slash midlife fat loss, midlife fat loss, thefitsoul.com slash midlife fat loss. So what I was able to find out, what I was able to learn by the labs is that I needed to dig deeper into how was I really. And when I did that, what I found was, is that I needed to release some emotions. I needed to look at some things with reality instead of um, kind of busying myself or avoiding um, some, some hurts and some pains. How, do you do that sometimes? Like if you just allow yourself to go to whatever it is, if I allow myself to go there, then that's going to hurt really bad. And so I prefer to distract myself instead of going through the pain. But the problem with that is, is that the body keeps score. Your body will keep score of what's going on. And for us to deal with our stuff, <laughs> our junk, <laughs> our crap, our heartaches, our pains, for us to deal with it is crucial. So I want to just walk you through a couple of thoughts that I've got about releasing whatever the ish <laughs> you need to release in 2024. Um, I just kind of typed out a whole list of stuff and I just want to, I, I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to listen to this podcast and listen to the rest of this and think to yourself, what do I want to release? Now, here's the thing. You can start to get discouraged and filled with regret because you didn't make the progress you wanted to make in 2023. And now the time is gone. So I want to right now caution you not to do that. That's not going to help you release it. That's not what I'm looking for here. Like, let's look at this with grace, not being too hard on ourselves. That's a big problem with um, so many women that I talk to. They are so darn hard on themselves. So I'm going to ask you right now, please don't be hard on yourself. But I truly like, this is such a heart centered approach. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching you from a heart centered place right now. I want you to receive it from a heart centered place. Like put your hand on your heart and just think, okay, what do I need to release? So as I'm going through this, as you feel and know, okay, yep, yep, yep. What I want you to do is release it, process it, and then release it. Don't go into regret. Okay. Pinky pal, pinky pal promise. All right. So, and again, I just, I just started jotting down some things that I'm releasing personally myself. Frustrations. What frustrations do you have in your life that you cannot control? <laughs> what circumstances are out of your control? When we have circumstances that are out of our control, um, and we can't do anything about, maybe it's with another person, maybe it's in a job or situation that you are in. The only thing that, the only agency you have, the only thing that you can really control is yourself. And that frustration over a situation that maybe it's unfair, maybe it's not right, maybe it's um, it's full of heartache is something that is literally out of your control. So what do you have that is frustrating you that you can't control, but all you can control is you. And that frustration is causing a negative energy inside of you and maybe a negative cycle. And it's actually diminishing your joy. So what frustrations do you have that you can release? How about this? What bad attitudes? Like examine, examine yourself. Are you showing up as you want to show up. And again, no condemnation here. These are questions that I've been asking myself. I'm like, I don't know that I did show up. I did. I, I know I did part of the time, but there's part of the time I'm like, you know what? I want to bring a better attitude, a higher energy to this relationship, to this relationship, to this aspect of my life. And I can see where maybe I've had a, I've had a bad attitude 
had a bad attitude. Like, I, let's own it. Let's own our bad. Let's own our crap, right? <laughs> where where can you improve your attitude? <laughs> How about your failures? We've all got failures, and we know that it's it's a part of life. Unfortunately, when we attach our failures to our identity, and then we that's where we start to get stuck. So I want to caution you strongly about that. What failures have you had this year? Where did you, uh, things, it didn't go, it didn't go like it was supposed to. Maybe it was in your business. Maybe it was in a marriage. Hey, maybe you're going through a, a divorce right now. Uh, maybe it was, maybe you've got failures and you really wanted to get your health back on track and you had really good intentions in January and it here you are again, same situation, same song, same dance, right? So don't your identity is not attached to your failures, but wh what failures do you just need to let go of? And <laughs> you need a new plan. You need to regroup altogether. How about sadness? Sadness, grief, loss. Like we need to acknowledge those things. I, I shared earlier that I distract, I avoid. That's the way that I've been operating and except my body's keeping score and I'm not going to do that anymore. And walking through grief and heartache is hard. And there's not really a timeline on grief. If you're walking through the loss of a loved one or a child or the death of a dream or the death of what you were hoping for in your life with relationships. They're just not where they should be. And you're feeling hurt and rejected. And it's a loss. It's a loss. It's hard. It sucks. And there's sadness wrapped around that. I want to ask you, what of that? I'm not saying that you just, okay, get over it. No, no, no. Don't hear that. I literally, I promise you, I'm not saying that. That would be, I wouldn't advise anyone to listen to counsel like that because that's that's poor counsel but what of what what of sadness can you release and pick up the joy of the lord as your strength okay how about this entitlement and expectations entitlement and expectations and again i'm asking you to search your heart here like i'm asking you to reflect like deeply go down deep where do you have an expectation of in in your life? And it's, it ain't turning around. Like it's not happening like you want to. I, I realized this recently in my own life. I had some um, entitlements and some expectations around some, uh, an issue. Okay. And I didn't get to that place right away. It took me really getting deep and processing um, a situation and then I realized, oh, wait, I think I've got some entitlements here. <laughs> I've got some unrealistic expectations. I've got some unmet expectations. And this is actually not helping me to feel vibrant and joyful. And so I, the only thing I can control is me. So again, kind of what agency do you have? I'll only All you can do is control yourself. So what entitlements and expectations do you have maybe in, of your children, of your spouse? Um, are you looking for someone else to satisfy you and make you happy? Like, man, we start to, when we hit that place, that's, that's kind of a dangerous place to go. Okay, moving on. How about selfish behaviors? Let's just call it out. Like, where are you selfish? Where are you selfish in your life? And because you are centering on your needs and maybe you're inwardly focusing and that focus is turned to a selfish focus, uh, that is never going to make you feel happy. I mean, it's just never, ever. So where do you maybe have, maybe, um, where are you selfish? What about bad habits? In 2023, you probably had better intentions of getting rid of them <laughs> and you didn't. Did you make some progress on eliminating some bad habits? 
I'll tell you what, this year I have really, I have had it my goal to, oh, excuse me, and drink a little cup of hot, hot cocoa. Um, I made it my goal to improve some habits. I've got really good habits in my life and I'm grateful for that. I've worked hard for that. This is part of what I teach and walk worthy. This is the reason why clients hire me to help them as a integrative nutrition health coach, as a Christian life coach, as a um, certified um, high performance coach. This is what I do. I understand the, the, the psychology behind change of human behavior and why we do what we do. And I kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper. But this year I was determined to let some habits in my own life that aren't horrible, but they were not great go and to slowly it makes some improvements. And you know what? It feels really good actually to sit at this, this part of the year and go, yeah, you know what? I am, I, one of the things I really wanted to do was um, reduce caffeine, reduce my caffeine intake. I've been doing that. It feels good. It, it really kind of sucked at first. Like I didn't enjoy that process, but I'm, I'm doing that. That feels better. Um, I also, another bad habit that I really wanted to moderate was being more moderate with alcohol consumption. I'm not a drunk. I don't go overboard, but I really wanted to dial that in and re I reevaluated my relationship with alcohol and it's altogether different now. And it feels so good. And there's a big move for like, uh, you know, sober and, um, you know, going completely alcohol free. And I think that's amazing if that's what is right for you. I really, really do. And I think that if you feel like you've got a problem with alcohol, you a hundred percent should consider that. Um, for me, it was to literally reevaluate my relationship with it and to do things altogether different. And it, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't easy at first. It was not easy at first, but I wanted to deal with my stress in a different level. Another thing that I really wanted to, to head on confront was um, emotional and stress eating. I wanted health around that. And I can say that, well, food and alcohol don't have the power over me and I felt like it did for a little bit. And so it feels so good. I'm so, again, if you want that help, if you want my help for you for 2024, again, I'm just taking a handful of women and you can go to thefitsoul.com slash midlife fat loss, thefitsoul.com slash midlife fat loss and learn more about that. Also, I'm hosting a masterclass and you can go to thefitsoul.com uh, slash masterclass and learn more about that. I think we're doing that on January. I want to say it is January the, I'm pulling up my calendar right now. I should have had this already. 10th, January the 10th. Um, and you can learn more about that there. So um, I want you to think about that though. Now, what bad habits do you have in your life that you really want to release? And you want to do it differently for 2024. Maybe it's comparing with others. Maybe it's, maybe it's a critical spirit. Maybe criticizing others to, to make yourself feel better. Um, maybe there's jealousy over others or a person. <laughs> but we definitely want to let these things go. All right. We're moving on. Insecurities. What insecurities do you have? How about assumptions? I was reading through, I want to read a quote from Holly Girth. Let me find it here. Uh, it was so good. I was reading this the other day and I was like, wow, that is so, um, let me find it. I'm having a hard time finding it. Sorry. Here we go. I want to look beyond my preferences and admirations, my insecurities and assumptions, my appraisals and fears. I want to stop asking, how does that person see me? And instead understand, how can I really see them? That's by Holly Garth. Where, where do we need to see people differently? Maybe they are biting and they are just kind of, I don't know. I've got some, I know some people that are just kind of nasty, honestly. They're just, they're just, oh, you almost dread when, the phone rings or you know that they're going to be in your sphere because you just don't know they're, they go off. They just go off. They're it's like, there's, you know, 
I, you know what I'm saying? I don't have to explain. I'm, I'm like walk, dancing on um, words over here, trying to be cautious, but we all have that person or people in our lives, or maybe you're that person. I don't know, but you just um, not in control of your emotions or this, you know, this person could not just use words very recklessly and you just never know what they're going to say. And I was thinking about um, a particular person who that's, that's them. I was like, what's going on? Like, why are they so hurt that they hurt other people so much? And I really was um, convicted a little bit. It's not about how the person sees you, but how do we really see them? How do we see difficult people in our lives? Um, how can we make an impact in, in their lives, even where they are right now? How can we actually have influence over that person, meaning how could we maybe help them to shift differently and think a little bit differently? It's really when you start to shift it like that, we're able to look at them from more of a perspective of love Then Oh my gosh, what are they going to do or say next? And I get it. Like, I, I understand. Like I got, I got people too. I got them. I got them. Got them. But I have been like just more mindful to go, wow, what's going on there? Why are they so broken? Man. Okay. <sighs> Old hurts. What are we going to release? Old hurts, harboring old hurts and um, unforgiveness. Man, that will eat your soul away. And so we've got to let that go. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. But uh, this is from Susie Larson's, I've been reading a devotional, but she talks about pride and presentation. And I'm just going to read a few little quotes from her book. And this is from Prepare Him Room on day, I think it's day 12. But it says, it's impossible to love others when your goal is to impress them. We are not capable of serving others when we have an insatiable appetite to be served, lauded, and held. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. So the she went on to say, in fact, I'm just, I'm just going to read this. This is so good. This is so good. Jesus cautioned them saying, this is from Luke 12, three, talking about, um, if you allow, let me just read, talking about leaven and what, le how leaven affects our soul. So again, we're, we're doing a little soul work today, right? If you allow this leaven to infect your soul, if you become someone who says one thing and does another, if you grow to love man's praise more than my glory, my being God, if you start to care more about your image than you do the lowly and the hurting in your midst, well, in due time, your hypocrisy will come to light. Beware of the leaven. Even the smallest can ruin your soul. Even the smallest bit. This is why it's so important for us to do this work. When we develop an appetite for power, position, or presentation, we will justify or spiritualize many things to hang on to our idol. It's sobering to fathom that if there's any private scheming to put ourselves above others, that it will one day come to light. So really that place of just this reflection and releasing the pride, the ego that drives us. And I know a lot of women that listen to this podcast are ambitious. And this is one that I'm just going to say it, that if you are ambitious and you are living boldly, oftentimes this is one that we struggle with. And I think that everyone struggles with pride. I'm just going to say that, but that we in this world of social media and, and building a personal brand. Um, I, I work, I do a lot of business coaching and help women do that. It's a fine line. It's a fine line because it's not about our glory, but it's about his. And anytime that we miss that, this can easily become an idol. Titles become idols is what Marshawn Evans Daniel says. And I, I just believe that so wholeheartedly. So we've got to check ourselves, check ourselves. I'm going to read this real quick. Um, this is from Matthew 10, 26 through 27. In this instant, Jesus charges his, his disciples. All I've taught you in the shadows, step into the light and proclaim it for the world to hear. What I whisper in your ear, steward it, apply it to your life, 
teach it to others. Don't shrink back in the face of prideful posturing leaders. Do not fear them. Leaven grows in the dark and will one day be brought into the light for all to see. The words you've heard me teach in the dark will one day be broadcast for the world to hear. All tribes, nations, and tongues will know that I am God. Don't wait until that time to live brave and bold. So we're called to live brave and bold. And of course, going into 2024, I want you to be thinking about these things, anything that's dimming your light. And it could be your own junk, the way that it could be your own thought processes. Most of the time it it is. It's um, learning how to govern your thoughts, learning how to have the mind of Christ. What does that mean? learning to take on Christ identity. What does that mean? I struggled with this for so many years. I was so broken. And when I really did start to learn this, what that meant, there's freedom. Oh my gosh, girl, there's so much freedom on the other side. If you're struggling this, I want you to hear this. I want you to know that you don't have to stay that way, but we cannot move forward in the freedom when we're holding on to all of the things that I mentioned in this podcast already. So we have to feel it to heal it, but it's time for us to let some stuff go. I'm a huge believer in making goals and setting goals. I'm a huge believer in moving forward just because of where I was for so long. And that's why I launched Walk Worthy and give you every tool and every resource you need to rewire your mind for who God says that you are. So you can understand that and walk in that capacity at that capacity. Um, I believe that oftentimes we get stuck and we need to level up our mentorship and level up the mentors in our lives and have someone to call us higher. Have someone to say, come on, come on, come on. And to think at a higher frequency, at a high, on a higher frequency, at a different capacity. If that's what you're looking for, I want you to know that this is what I do. And I help women reach their goals, whatever they are, whether it's like I've told you, I'm getting ready to do fat loss. Um, But if it's in the life coaching arena, whatever your goal is, business coaching, I do a lot of business coaching. It is a powerful thing when you incorporate coaching and mentorship, someone who's a little further along the journey than you, but that will call you um, higher and hold you to this, to a standard that will help you to unleash your potential. So much possibility is waiting for you in 2024. Um, I'm a big word of the year, girl. (laughs) I usually come up with my, and and the Lord gives me my word. I usually come up with my word of the year, usually like first of December, I already have it. And and this year it was so clear. Oh my gosh. It was so clear. This word of the year and mine's breakthrough this year. And I, I feel it. I feel, I feel it already. And I'm just, I'm already praying that I'm already praying about breakthrough. Um, I want you to know that 2024 can be your breakthrough year. And I want to help you achieve that breakthrough in your life. So reach out to me and um, if check the show notes here. You can see how to connect. Go to thefitsoul.com and I will, um, I've got all sorts of free resources on there. I've got a discovery call, but I am taking a handful of one-on-ones and I will help you get to the next level and get there quicker. That's when you work, here's the deal. When you work with a mentor, when you work with a coach, it helps to 10X your life and go quicker. So if you want some help, getting to your goal at a higher capacity and quicker, higher coach, period, the end, like boom. Um, okay. Happy new year. Again, thank you for being here. If you found value to this, I'm going to ask that you share this podcast. When I have podcasts that I listen to and I love, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, one of the things that I do is I take it and I copy and paste it. Like you can go to the podcast itself and hold it down And it'll give you the option to paste it and I'll paste it. And then I think through all of the, all of the people that would benefit from that podcast. And I'm not even talking, I'm just talking about any podcast that I listen to. I I like to listen to podcasts and I send it to people. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. This will really help you. And if you felt value from this podcast, would you do that? Would you, would you send this out? Because I just believe that we should walk worthy of the calling that we're called. 
in freedom. That's walking in freedom. That's walking in spiritual maturity. That is walking in liberty. And I want us to have a breakthrough 2024 year. I want to leave you with this one verse, Philippians 3, 13 through 14. And it says, it says brothers and sisters, but most of y'all are sisters. So I'm going to say, girlfriend, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Listen, forget the things that are in the past. Strain forward to achieve that um to, toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. God has called you. God's got a calling on your life. He's calling all of us to walk worthy of that calling. We need to know what that calling is. We need to walk purposefully and intentionally. So I do pray that as we're wrapping up this year, that you really think through, what do you need next year? What are you focusing on? What are the dreams of your heart? What are the desires of your heart? I'm, I'll come back with another uh, next week. Join me and we'll talk about 2024 and setting some goals and vision and what can that look like? But I want you to be thinking also now is um, what are your goals going to be? Um, what skills do you need to develop to achieve your goals? Where, where do you need to put your energy? What, what relationships do you need to focus on? What habits do you want to focus on to, to uh, become the healthiest version of yourself? I would love to hear, I would love to hear from you um, on all these things. All right, hit, I was about to say hook me up, hit me up on social media. You can, uh, Instagram is my favorite place to hang out, um, but hit me up. Let me know. I'm here cheering you on. I believe in you and let's walk worthy of the calling within us. Let's go do it. Like for real, for real, let's do it and do it well. All right. See you next time. Bye.